For the longest time in my life, I thought of plastic bottles in a friendly way. They're light, easy to use, convenient, they're everywhere, they're filled with delicious things, and you can recycle them when you're done with them. To me, that's how most people look at plastic bottles. My view of plastic bottles has changed though when I start to think about the linear economy. To make this plastic bottle, it first has to come from a natural resource, usually oil from the earth. It's extracted, then it's made into something, a bottle. That bottle is shipped somewhere, filled with a product. That product is shipped elsewhere to like the FISO cafeteria, and it's bought by you and me. We drink it, we enjoy it, and then we recycle it, or even put it in the trash. When we think of the take, make, waste economy, or the linear economy, this bottle changes. And for me, it becomes something that's quite sinister. It's something that it even has like a smokestack coming out of it because it has a pretty heavy carbon footprint because of this linear economy. Science is good for this. It can tell us how many grams of carbon is represented in one plastic bottle. And it's about 898 grams of carbon when we think about the bottle over the cycle of its lifetime. Math can help us as well think of this if we put that into a ratio. So every bottle equals 898 grams of carbon. Well, let's put it in context of our school. FIS sells about 7,000 bottled drinks every month. If we look at all the bottled drinks we sell on an average month, that's a lot of carbon. How much? Math to the rescue, my friends, and equivalent ratios. I've got a unit rate of 1 to 898, so 7,000 represents how much? Maybe you can do that calculation in your head really quickly. There's your answer. 6,286,000 grams of carbon. That's a really, really big number, but it's also a number that's difficult for us to comprehend. I didn't quite understand it. I just knew it was big. So again, math to the rescue. If I think about 6 million, I know that I can calculate that about one kilogram of carbon is equal to about 7.1 kilometers driven in a car. And that's a comparison or a ratio that makes more sense to me. So what I did is I took my 6 million grams and converted that into kilograms. So I got 6,286 kilograms of carbon that we produce every month with our packaged drinks here on the FISO campus. Again, I've got equivalent ratio. If a one is 7.1 kilometers, how many grams, 6,286 would be how many kilometers? It would be 44,932 kilometers. Still a really big number. It's hard to imagine and comprehend. So I did some equivalency and I thought, where would I end up if I got my car and drove 44,000, almost 45,000 kilometers? Here's the answer. If I start off in my car here in Germany, I can drive all the way down to the equator and once around the world every month. That's a huge carbon footprint that we don't need to be putting out every month with our week or monthly operations. So working with the Sustainability Committee and Aramark and other people, students and teachers have come up with a plan that starting in January 2025, you'll still be able to get delicious drinks in the cafeteria, but you won't be getting them in bottles. They will come out of a dispenser and we'll all use reusable cups to enjoy the variety of drinks. So by th thinking globally and acting locally, we've really focused in on UNSD 12, Responsible Consumption and Production. We're also making sure that we have much more clean water because producing our bottles is actually a way to taint water as well. So thanks for listening. Hope you enjoyed.